this video we're going to look at in-cylinder pressure testing using a pressure transducer like this. You might have seen one of these waveforms before. It looks really cool, but what can you actually learn from it? So these in-cylinder pressure testers give us a really like a window to the inside of the cylinder when the engine's operating. And if you understand how to read the waveforms, then you can tell quite a lot of, about what's going on. We can check for mechanical issues in the valve train, like a slipped camshaft lobe or a variable camshaft timing issue. And we can also look for engine failures like warm piston rings or bores and also possibly conrod issues. Combine this with the pull sensor measurement that we looked at in this video and you can actually get a really good picture of exactly what is wrong with this engine. So Ditex have sent me this PDS500X Advanced Diagnostic Pressure Kit for us to have a look at. So let's take a quick look at what we get. So in this kit you get the PDS500G, which is the uh, gauge measurement pressure as opposed to absolute. Now the benefit of having the gauge pressure is that it auto zeros so that um, at atmospheric pressure you're reading a zero measurement and I suppose that's much easier to read, a bit more intuitive. Another benefit of this sensor is that it comes with its own uh, power supply lead so no batteries. Any of you that have used probes with the batteries in know that you know accidentally leaving them switched on inside the toolbox and you come to use them and the, and the battery's dead especially amp clamps so that's that's a nice feature and it also comes with lots of different adapters for measuring different applications so a real good selection of adapters in here which looks like you'd be able to connect it to pretty much anything not only used for in cylinder pressure you can use it to measure any pressure I suppose as long as you've got the adapter and it doesn't exceed the maximum pressure. They say that you can also use it for hydraulic measurements which is really handy. So in the kit they've sent me they've also given me this uh, flexi hose with a quick connector on which is what I'm going to use today so that's quite a handy little feature and one that most of us are probably quite used to using on your conventional compression testers so we'll, we'll give that a go and uh, see what it's like. This is a nice thought that we've got in here too. So we've got this ground for your spark plug so that you don't have to leave the coil uh, with no load on it and protect your coil. So some of the specs that uh, Ditex boast on this sensor are the, it's a 500 PSI sensor, uh, equivalent to the WPS 500, the, the other type of sensor you can buy. However, it has a 200 PSI setting with this switch here. And they tell me that you should use that all the time unless you're going to exceed that pressure. It has a 100 microsecond response time, uh, maximum temperature is 90 degrees C and accu accuracy of 1% depending on which setting you're on. So because this can go up to 500 psi or 35 bar it's also suitable for diesel applications however you do not get the diesel uh, adapters inside the kit what I suggest doing is buying a cheap diesel compression tester and using the adapters that you get in there. So let's plug it in and give it a go. Okay, so we'll connect up the power supply. Connect the sensor up to this connector here. Find the keyway, there we go. We'll connect that up to channel A, BNC connector there. So we'll connect it up. Okay, let's take this measurement on cylinder one. We'll put this spark plug ground on there as well. So that just looks like that and we'll give this a ground on the engine here. Okay, so we need the adapter for this one. We'll just put this thread adapter on to increase it to match the size of the spark plug. It's quite good that this set has got all these adapters in there. Okay, then connect it up like that. And there we are, we're ready to go. 
so we're all connected up to the scope um, of course the scope is reading a voltage reading and you would need to set up a custom probe for a accurate psi reading now i've just done a crude version of that now because uh, my hands are cold and the formula they sent me doesn't quite work in pico software so i'll have to catch up with the guys at ditex and uh, see how they want me to input that formula um, so what i've put in there should work Okay, so let's select the probe. We're on 200 PSI mode, switched on. We can see that we're switched on to 200 PSI mode. And let's put the scale all the way up to 200 PSI. So we can see there now that we're reading around zero. We've got a line at 63.9 milli PSI. So I'm going to put a trigger on and start it up. Remember to disconnect the injector as well. Okay, so let's increase the time. Okay, there we go. So I've just changed it to the 80 to 100 PSI mode because the vertical resolution of this 2204 isn't great. But that's something we can work with there. Okay, so there's our known good. We've saved that. Let's go and see what it means. So if you want to have a go at analysing this yourself, then uh, you can download this uh, waveform from, our, from my waveform library. If you just click the link in the description below and tap in your email address, we'll send you the link to the folder. You can then open this up on your PicoScope uh, software and have a go with all the cursors, see how you get on. Okay, so let's have a look at this waveform and the different points on there that we need to be aware of. So still using the trusty PicoScope 2204A and now we start to see where the kind of specs of this scope are kind of limiting our the quality of our waveform. So you can see on here that, it, that it's a little bit grainy. So if we just zoom in a little bit there, now that's uh, down to vertical resolution. So it's, it's the abil scope's ability to draw a straight line in the upward direction. Let's have a look at what we've got. So first of all, what we're gonna do is use the degrees ruler and pull that green circle over from the right hand side and place that into the middle, middle of the compression peak. And then we're gonna pull the other one to the middle of our other peak there, okay? So now we want to reassign the, the measurements on these. So that first one we want to be zero degrees. And this one here, we want to be 720 degrees. Okay, so we've now got 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation between the two peaks. What we're then gonna do is bring some phases in. So click the rulers button there and we've got our four strokes of the cycle. So this would be our expansion or power stroke, but you know, we, we're not seeing a power there because there was no spark plug in the cylinder. Then we've got our exhaust, and here's the intake, and then this last part is compression. And we can see that is where the uh, cylinder pressure increases. So I did use quite a crude um, calculation to set this probe up. However, it seems to have worked. So we've got a reading of 98 PSI, which is around about seven bar, which is mm, around about there. But it's okay for what we're doing today. So what do we want to be looking for on this waveform? So let's, let's start from the beginning here. This here is our compression uh, peak. So the cylinder comes up to top dead center here. So this zero line represents top dead center and then come back down to bottom dead center here. Now this peak here, we want it to be even on both sides. If it's not, then that indicates that there's a problem in the inside the cylinder with 
possible leakage. So what we can do there is, is just bring this down kind of halfway. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we go to about here, and what we want is the time between these two to be the same. So what we can do is pull in two rulers here to the TDC line. We will lock them and then move them across there. And we can see there that we're pretty much dead on there. It's the same gap each side. So I'm looking at this gap here, okay? So that's good. So if it wasn't even, um, for example, if it was if it was shorter on the um, expansion side, it would mean that the pressure was falling faster on the way down, which means that on the way up, at some point you lost compression. Okay, the next part of the waveform that we want to look at is, is here, and this is our uh, uh, exhaust valve opening, okay? So when the pressure starts rising, that indicates that the in exhaust valve has, has opened, okay? Because if we look at the pressure here, here at around zero bar here, and this is going into a vacuum state, okay? I say a vacuum state. So that pressure there is then gonna increase when the exhaust valve opens. So this is bottom dead center, and once the exhaust valve is opened, that is then gonna increase that pressure in the cylinder and push those exhaust gases out. Here then we've got exhaust back pressure and we can see there that that's pretty much at zero bar. Then around here then, okay, back at top dead center, that intake valve is gonna open, okay? And then the cylinder's gonna come back down and we can see there that the pressure then has gone below that zero line again. So that's our uh, intake manifold uh, vacuum really is what, what we're measuring there. And then we can see that around here somewhere that the, the, all the valves will close and then that pressure will be increased in the cylinder. The key main points here then is that we've got the compression peak here and we want to make sure that that's equal. We've got the exhaust valve opening here and exhaust back pressure. The intake valve opens here and as the cylinder draws down, we can see the pressure reduce indicating our intake manifold vacuum. And then the intake valve closes, the cylinder comes back up to top dead center, creating our cylinder pressure. So there's just a basic introduction to in-cylinder pressure diagnostics and the main key points on the waveform. And there's a lot more analysis to be done on this type of waveform. Um, however, this sensor, really impressed with that. The scope did an okay job. However, I think at some point I may look into getting something a bit more powerful um, just to get a better resolution on the screen.